Okay, the topic that we're talking about here, the debt versus the deficit, is mostly in the McConnell macro split in chapter 13 or so, although it's discussed a little bit before and a little bit after as well. This is a distinction that a lot of people get mixed up on, and in, out there in the popular press you'll sometimes see errors made in this, so it's worth taking a little bit of time to really carefully differentiate between the two ideas. The first is the debt, sometimes called the federal debt or the U.S. public debt. The debt in the United States is the total of all United States Treasury bonds and bills that have been sold out there to anybody, to you and I, through our pension funds or our life insurance funds, to foreign governments, foreign corporations, basically the total sum of U.S. Treasury bonds and bills out there on the planet. Some of these have been sold within the last month or two. Some of these have been sold five years or seven years or 20 or 25 years ago. We have a big menu to choose from. There are very short-term United States Treasury bills, they're called, and they're very long-term U.S. Treasury bonds. So the value of the public debt, the U.S. debt at any particular time, is the sum total of all of these bills and bonds that have sold that are still out there in the hands of someone. Um, some of them might have been sold in, in presidential administrations from long ago, so there are a lot of different bonds out there. That's a total over time. By contrast, we've got the U.S. budget deficit, and I'm talking about this mostly from the national level. The United States budget at any, at any given time equals tax revenues minus three things added together. That's why I've got these big parentheses here. New government spending, transfer payments, and service on the debt, and that's the very debt we were just talking about a couple of minutes ago. New government spending is spending on brand new stuff. It might be stuff to fight the war in Afghanistan or in Iraq, uh, goods and services associated with national defense. It might be roads, it might be schools. Brand new government spending. Transfer payments are those kinds of transfers that go between a taxpayer and a recipient of some kind of a transfer like social security or welfare or unemployment. The last category here is debt service, and that's all of those aspects associated with servicing those treasury bills and treasury bonds that are out there in the hands of the public. So we've got total tax revenues minus the sum of these three things. Now, if tax revenues are greater than government spending transfers and debt service, we say that we have a budget surplus. If tax revenues are less than government spending, transfers, and debt service, we say that we have a budget deficit. The way we finance a budget deficit is by borrowing. We sell more bonds. So every time we go through an entire calendar year and the budget is in a deficit, you know that this number is going to go up because the United States government, the Treasury, will have sold bonds to pay for the government spending, the transfers, and or the debt service that we're not able to pay for through tax revenues. The budget, therefore, is defined on sometimes a monthly, quarterly, or yearly basis. The debt is, in a sense, the sum of all of those deficits we've had over all of the years, back to 30 years ago, which is the oldest, the longest term government bond that we'll, set, that we'll sell. Now I want to talk about another concept associated with the deficit that's important in this chapter, and that's the idea of something called automatic stabilizers. Put this in bright red. Automatic stabilizers. These are parts of the budget that change automatically when the economy changes. Nobody's doing a law that's any different. Nobody is passing legislation that affects anything. The way that current laws and policies in place are written, certain aspects of the budget will change even if no one does anything. For example, let's suppose that we have, as we have had over the last couple of years, a, whoops, let's get a better pen, a GDP drop. The United States is in the middle of the Great Recession. We haven't recovered from it completely, even though GDP has turned around. But in 2007, 2008, GDP fell significantly. One of the things this caused was a big increase in unemployment, which right now is hovering around 9.5%. 
Well, during the recession, without anybody doing anything, two big portions of the government budget changed significantly. The first one is tax revenues. When unemployment went up, tax revenues fell. That by itself, that automatic stabilizer, pushed the budget further into a deficit. Nobody did anything. Nobody made any kind of choice here. But because people who are unemployed, unemployed don't pay taxes, their income taxes on a tax of zero are zero because folks who are unemployed cut down on their spending. And so sales tax revenue goes down, many other taxes as well. When unemployment goes up, tax revenues fall automatically. The other big thing that happens because of this increase in unemployment is that transfer payments go up. As people lose their jobs, they will more frequently apply for unemployment insurance. They will eventually perhaps even go on welfare. They will possibly go and get food stamps and other kinds of aid to families with dependent children. And that causes this part to go up as well. This tax revenue drop, this transfer payment increase means that when this happens, when the economy falls into a recession and unemployment goes up, the budget automatically gets worse. That bright red. The budget moves into a deficit. It's important when you're talking about the changes in the budget whether it's in deficit or surplus, the changes in the debt that result from that, to untangle what happens automatically because of movements in the economy and what happens because of a policy change. This has been happening over the last two years, through 2007, 2008, 2009, and even into 2010. By contrast, towards the end of the Clinton administration, the opposite happened. The economy boomed. GDP went up considerably. Unemployment fell to below 5%, even below 4% at, at one point in time. And these arrows all reversed themselves. Tax revenues rose, transfer payments fell, and the budget went into a surplus. Through the last three years of the Clinton administration and the first couple of years of the Bush administration, that wonderful economic boom that we'd all experienced caused bu budget surpluses. Again, that was because of economic changes cyclical changes in GDP and unemployment that automatically affected the deficit and therefore the debt.